satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. Minus the alcohol side of things, what yeah. would you put as lifestyle-based factors for healthy um, liver health? We have some very interesting things that we can do. Uh, so first is that uh, one is there are I mean something known as preventive medicine, which is very important. That uh, you know you do a set of things or you avoid a set of things, you can actually avoid getting into trouble. So doctors don't want damage control; they mm. actually want people not to get sick. So the number one is that physical activity is very important for liver health. By physical activity, I mean, and this is studied also well. You need to have 150 minutes of moderate to rigorous physical activity a week, which is easily doable for everybody. So it's 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous, rigorous physical activity in a week. So let me define moderate and uh, rigorous. So moderate is just cycling, swimming, brisk walking. Brisk walking is basically you take 100 steps in a minute. So that's 100 steps in 60 seconds. That's brisk walking, or simply running. for at least 3 hours to 4 hours in a week so that is good moderate physical activity rigorous is what you do inside a gym under a trained protocol where there is structure and you actually do a lot of aerobic exercises you do weight training you do resistance training you do high intensity exercises you do circuit training all of this will come under vigorous activity this actually helps prevent a lot of liver related diseases especially the ones to do with metabolic liver disease that is non alcoholic fatty liver disease and other things second is like i spoke before black coffee is a very good uh, intervention that you can uh, include in your diet 3 uh, cups which is about 150 ml each uh, every day perhaps decaf and decaf so if somebody has uh, cannot take caffeine does not like, tolerate caffeine you can go for decaf because caffeine is not the uh, good part of coffee it's something known as polyphenol and uh, coffee is another intervention that you can do third is sleep which is very important because uh poor quality sleep non restorative sleep lack of sleep these all promote uh poor liver health in the form of fatty liver disease so sleep try to get at least 7 hours minimum every day and the fourth is that identify yourself as having some risk factor for liver disease for example if you have immediate family members with liver disease and if they have had metabolic disease like diabetes or obesity or heart disease or stroke or high cholesterol high blood pressure anything so you are directly at risk of developing liver disease so please check yourself in the in the sense that you go to a doctor get a physical uh, health checkup and also a, a checkup for the liver so uh, liver checkup can include liver function test as part of the blood work and in the liver function test if they find some abnormality plus you have some additional diseases that are uh, putting you at risk for the liver disease then they will ask you to do ad advanced liver testing which may or may not include special types of imaging something like something we everybody knows like fibro scan or shear wave which is basically ultrasound related imaging which they will do from the outside and identify if the liver health is good or not by looking at the liver stiffness how expensive is it it's anywhere from free because there are a lot of companies and uh, uh, you know camps that do it for free to 3000 rupees okay so mm. it's it's uh, it's not done for everyone it's done for those with high risk of liver disease especially from metabolic or alcohol related liver disease so that is how you do a liver, liver checkup and those who need to do liver checkup the uh, fourth is please get vaccinated for hepatitis b uh, you need to know if you are protected against hepatitis b or not simple just do a two blood test one is a test called as hbsag and second is a test known as anti hbs if hbsag is not reactive negative and and dhbs is not reactive or negative that means that you need to get vaccinated because you don't have the infection you don't have the protection also if hbsag is positive that means you have the infection in that sense and dhbs will be negative and dhbs is basically antibodies or protection against hepatitis b but if you are protected then your hbsag will be negative and and dhbs antibodies to hepatitis b will be positive so that positivity also matters so if it if your antibody titers that levels of antibody against hepatitis b in your body is more than 10 but less than 100 then you have to take a booster only for of the hepatitis b vaccine but if it is more than 100 you are well protected you don't need to take any vaccine at all simple things i mean these are preventable causes for liver disease is there any other test you'd recommend that just an average healthy person take to figure out liver function um i would not 
recommend any such test because ideally we want to save resources and use resources for people who require it so stressing the you know the health system doesn't <laughs> doesn't make sense for me but uh, if there are risk factors definitely and also i would like to say that liver function test does not actually mean healthy. it shows a healthy liver so a lot of cancer patients liver cancer patients that i treat they have perfectly normal liver function test even better than mine but they have liver cancer so but they have risk factors for so liver cancer for example hepatitis b diabetes obesity alcohol use they still have normal liver functions so we have to look everything from a whole perspective if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip